I'm an old school barber. I'll put my guys up against anybody. What's it like having a business with brother? Okay. They're, they're, both, they're learning how to use computers. You know how to use a computer, Jeff? Yeah, I turn what it on. What kind of computer? You turn it on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I what happens after that? And then I start Do, by arguing with it. What have I done? I've unleashed a lion. <laughs> Best barbershop in the country. That's what we're trying to do. This is the A-team. 22 years old, Jacob. He's an amazing barber. I got big poppy right over here. Look at the smile. <laughs> Thank you. I'm here from 7 in the morning till midnight. From whenever till whenever. At 52, ready? This is what we do to open. We go, we're open, folks. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we're nonstop. Elliot's usually the first one in the door, 9 o'clock. Then Jake comes in at 10. I usually bug him to bring me a coffee because I can never drink enough coffee. <laughs> right, Jake? I only have, what, 10 a day? When all my guys are here, it's time to work. But most of all, we have fun. That's why I love coming in here. Cause it's not, it's not like work to me. I can't see myself doing anything else. Oh my God! It's funny what happens in a barber shop. Some really strange people come in. P.T. Hawk, hot dog, Bachi. My boy Bachi was here today. I tried to get him to come back. He's a professional poker player. Jojo, Don Juan who I love to death. <clears throat> Once I was cutting a little boy's hair, and I care so much about the little kid, he was falling out of the chair, and I went to grab him, and stuck a pair of scissors through my arm, and I had to go to the hospital to get stitches, but all I did was empty my cash register and leave my door unlocked. And I came back an hour later to my whole barber shop being yellow taped with the crime scene, and everyone thought I was murdered because <laughs> there was blood all over the barbershop and my register was empty. So my name's Nick. Uh, I've been cutting here for 10 years. Uh, my father had been a barber for a little bit and uh, decided to take over in his footsteps a little bit and been cutting here since then. I like to make jokes a lot. I'm the one that's a class clown and type in here. Keep the place live. Friday nights after 8. We just have all our own friends come in for haircuts, and then uh, just go right to the liquor store, have fun, have a little party. This is how it is when we have fun at work. Head all the Jacob, Baba. <laughs> Look at him, huh? Always. Look at that. I love the fact that Jacob is not afraid of doing things that other people won't do. My mother's a hairdresser. But even when I was younger, I loved, used to love getting my hair cut. He's like a second son. <laughs> right here. This is like the icing on the cake. The icing on the cake. That's right, every barbershop it's on and nobody does it like these guys do. Every week, I talk to my guys. Everyone get ready, we're gonna have a little meeting in the back. Anything out there, let's get it out there because I can't fix it if I don't know. What are we gonna talk about in the meeting, Gary? I gotta get that last barber station filled and if I have to hire another employee, you know my rule is I get a, before I hire somebody, I make sure all you guys get along with him. If there's ever a problem, let's just talk, because if we, whatever it is, we can fix it. We need to hire the girls for the massage. Just getting enough money to redo that room. You know, it takes time and money. Just have a third of my check go to the massage every week. Okay. <laughs> Done deal. This doesn't work unless you have a good team. If you surround yourself with good talent, any successful business, that's what you really need. You need good people around you. Ellie, <laughs> take the pocket out for huh? You want to go for a walk, big guy? Huh? If he likes you, he'll say, hey, grab my pocket, go for a walk. <laughs> He's a musician. Unbelievable barber. 22 years. One of the best. Uh, I want everybody to know me. Everybody knows that the people I work because they're good people, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's quiet, but when he breaks loose, he's one of the funniest guys you ever meet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I grew up in Fall River. My whole family's been cutting hair, Josh, since as long as I can remember, 125 years. My grandfather was, uh, you know, they came from Portugal. And the legend goes that they had three sons. Who had three sons who were barbers? Who had three sons who were barbers? And now the other side of the tree branches off, like any great fairy tale, right? My Fabu. Married my Vavo. She 
had three sons who were barbers, who had three sons who were barbers, who had three sons who were barbers. And the tree branches off amazingly like that. When I was little, I used to hang at my grandfather's barbershop. As soon as I could get my master license, 1984, I opened my own place. I couldn't work for anyone else. For years, I didn't have my shop. I sold it. I made a mistake. Sold it, and for years, people have been bugging me. Oh, open a shop again. Open a shop again. I got my brother over there who helped me out, because if it wasn't for him, none of this would have happened. Am I getting a shave? Yeah. yeah. All right, let's do it. I want the deluxe shave, okay? The one with the happy ending. Yep. No problem, big oh. boy. <laughs> well, I'm the youngest of five, and I've been plotting my whole, my re revenge for fucking my whole lifetime. <laughs> it's been a, it's been a, it's been a climb to the top. That's a good brother. That's what family's all about right there. I got the best brother in the world, and you know, he's, they don't come better than that guy. Not only did he help me financially, he helped, you know, I couldn't have designed this. He's the one who designed all this. I would love to tell people I'm the one behind this, but I don't. I tell the truth. I didn't design it. All I am is the guy who works. I kind of, like, chose to open up a business with the person with the worst luck in the world. But he has good luck in one way. Like, he can sit at a card table and he can take everybody's money. But he's going to fucking, there's going to be a hole but in I'm his pocket. But I'm probably going to get hit by a bus on the way. Yeah. There. There'll be a hole in his pocket. Oh, yeah. And then all the money will fall through before, yeah, he, yeah. before he gets to the valet. <laughs> I have an old time bubble from the gangster days. The metal part was underneath. Because when they used to shoot the gangsters, the gangsters would duck under and the height behind the middle of the bullets would go off the metal. That's the one you want. You're not going to believe who owns our three stones right now. I'm a little Compton. I wanted to put it in that, told my brother to put it in that corner. It would be a great showpiece. You know, he, he's going to talk your ear off. He's going to talk your ear off. So just get in, strap in, because you're going to keep it going. Gary was a great box. I don't know if he ever told you that. Yeah, he was a golden, a silver mittens champion, everything. That's 100,000 rounds, yeah, folks. Yeah, yeah. What does it say when your brother beats up the ice cream man? Oh, I mean, the ice cream man was a pervert. He picked on the kids. So I had to beat him up, sit him outside the truck, and let all the kids have free ice cream that day because he wasn't a nice man. It, well, I'm the guy who makes people laugh when they come in here and hope will make them look good. Those are my two goals make you laugh and make you look good. He's an amazing guy. He's too funny. A lot of jokes. <laughs> I'm just a big mouth. I think I, sometimes I just talk to him myself. <laughs> I'm a people person. I want to be that guy that makes everybody comfortable. I'd be nuts if I sat in an office and had a, you know, sit in an office all day. I love people. He's like a father to me. He's not even like a, an employee or a boss or nothing. It's just like working for like a, uh, a good friend. I learn a lot with him. Every day I can I, I learn something about from him and the other guys. There's always something you can learn in this business. And when you think you're that good that you can't learn no more, you you better come around. I'm gonna soften this whole face up. It's gonna soften my face up. It's been softening my face up since I was five. <laughs> Fucking throw me down the stairs. Soften your face up. <laughs> Remember that time, Gary? There's only two people, the Portuguese and the ones who want to be. That's what I was told my whole life. Why, is there other people out there? I thought it was just Portuguese people and the ones who want to be. I wish I was a Portuguese. Ask Mike, he'll tell you. Oh, wait a minute. Chicken Mozambique. I mean, that's where it's at. Wait a minute, that's Portuguese. But it's good. It's real good. I tell my son, if you enjoy your job, it's like you never worked a day in your life. Pretty much growing up in a barbershop since I was, you know, I don't know, a day old. <laughs> it's one of the rare places in the world where people can just be themselves and feel sort of uninhibited, and that's the beauty of it. You get a lot of cool perspectives, you meet a lot of great people, it's, it's a very diverse environment, it's a very positive environment, and I don't know, I've always, I couldn't really see myself coming up any other way. No, I'm not a barber. I went the college route, yeah. I work with kids with autism, actually. I do in-home services. You know, I work a lot, so I try to get here, you know, two, three nights a week, come play some pool, hang out, um, you know.
Why would you go in that pocket? Wait, why? I'm not full pocket. Okay. I'm a All right, listen. You hit it. Just trust me. The ball's gonna come over here, mm -hmm. and you're gonna get position for the nine ball. Game over. You know and what? It's, That's completely wrong. Why? Why would you say that? Because you would. You, you want to go this way, so you send the cue this way, so you can go put the nine that way. If you're gonna be over here, look how much green you have to work with. If you're coming this way, you have why, to work what, with. What, what side would you play here? I would play it into this pocket. That's what I just said. We end up arguing about politics a lot. Um, but what my dad's really infamous well, for is his storytelling. That. Yeah, that's we're not gonna. Anyways, what I was saying is that what my dad is really known for is storytelling. My entire life, really, my entire life, I feel like I've lived the life that he's lived because of how vividly he's able to tell stories. And I feel like he's been so many places and met so many people and had so many incredible experiences. But really, the great part is the way that he's able to capture it. And you know, like you feel like you're living in that moment. This is an experience. This isn't just a haircut. The name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, David, be three counts. Oh my God. <laughs>